there and welcome back to another episode of Tam's Crafty Knits. It's been a little while since I posted a video but I have been very busy working on one particular project and I'll show you that in a minute. And today I've actually been doing a little bit of shopping at the Sheep and Wool Show. Um, I spent most of my time looking around and um, it's it's like being a kid in a candy shop. You do not know where to look first. Um, I will make a few recommendations if you're actually going to go, if you're planning on going over the weekend. Um, it's today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Um, and I'll kind of get into that in a minute. And I'll show you a few things I picked up. I did have a set amount of money, and I actually came home with money left over so I was pretty impressed with myself I will say but I did go there with a project in mind and like things kind of going around in my head of what I wanted so that kind of stopped any big impulse buying there was a couple of things that I were impulse buys one I had wanted for a while and something else said one of a kind and I snatched that up. So I'll get to that in a bit. <clears throat> what I'm wearing today, I actually literally just got back from the Sheep and Wool show. So I wore my, um, we've had people Instagram, um, my Simple Yet Effective Cowl by Tin Can Knits. The yarn that I used for this is the Turkish Light Colorway by Ms. Click Clack in her Darling Road DK base. The hat um, is a pattern that I just made up myself and I used the Cray Xmas Crayfish Colorway from Hannah. Uh, her store is Rosehip Island on Etsy and she also has her podcast Rosehip Chick. So check those out if you haven't. Um, I also saw a podcaster um, at the Sheep and Wool show and I walked past her and her mum, I um, actually saw Melinda who is Yonder Woman um, and I didn't ask for a photo because like she was with her mum and she was doing stuff and we'd walk past on our way to the bathroom. We'd, put, we'd gone in and who was outside when we come out? Was Melinda was standing there waiting for her mum and I just I didn't think it was appropriate to ask her for a photo outside the toilet but I did say you know hello and I liked her podcast um but and she she did mention that there was a podcaster lunch or podcaster meetup um but I didn't know how long we were staying so um I, I didn't end up going to that but maybe next year that's something um I can do but yeah I there may have been other podcasters there and I just I didn't notice them I, I'm not subscribed to them I didn't you know know who they were um but yeah I'll get onto that in a minute so that's what I'm wearing um I was a little bit upset I worked my butt off literally to try and get this finished so I could wear it the a cheap more show um unfortunately I didn't get it finished I'm a hundred I don't know exactly how many hundred, maybe a hundred, hundred and thirty rows off being finished. Um, it's in this bag that I made myself. <clears throat> I am on the second violet section. I just need to do some rejigging down here because it is obviously um, a paid for pattern. If you could see the actual pattern and all my scribble on it. My mum saw it last night and she's like, don't you need to, you know, bring out a new, because I was thinking about making another one in some different colours, and she's like, well, you'll need to print off another another pattern, won't you? You can't, you know, see what it says on there. I'm like, yeah, it's all good. I understand my own scribble. Um, so it is the Anissa Wrap by Amber O'Brien. I actually have her um, newest shawl pattern as well. Um, but yes, this is almost done. I will show you what I'm up to. I believe last time I showed you this, I was only up to the first eyelet section. Oh my gosh, it's all tangled. 
Good and good. Oh. But it has grown significantly. <laughs> As I said, I worked my bum off this week to try and get it finished, but alas, it just didn't happen. Uh, let's see, so I'll show you right side around. So, oops. As you can see, um, I'm just going to kind of reorganise myself here, making sure that nothing falls off the needles. So, as you can see, it's grown so much. Um, it feels soft and squishy. There is a little bit of a... I'm kind of annoyed at this yarn that I dyed myself. Um, this is the yellowy colour in the stripes. Um, over here, let's just get these two needles back together before anything goes flying off because I put so much work into this and um, I actually think since I last, oh no, I'd already said that I'd restarted the, the first bit because it was just, I didn't like how the eyelet section was turning up and then I ended up dropping a bunch of stitches. Um, but over here, I had to actually, there was no way I was going to get this yarn untangled. So I had to actually, the where I'd actually tied the yarn together was in the back. I mean, you probably can't tell once it's all together, but I did actually end up having to tie, tie the yarn together, which was kind of annoying. But um, yeah, I'm, I love this color combination. Um, I'm using the uh, eyelet sections. So the purple is um, Sweet Georgia BFL sock um, in the raspberry colorway I don't know if they still make that color well they might still make it but they don't do this the BFL sock I'm not, I'm not sure um, I have quite a bit of <laughs> ends to weave in the um, when I'm finished um, but yeah I'm really really happy with how it's turned out the gray is a luxury the four Four ply luxury slate from Bendigo Woolen Mills, and the um, the yellow, golden, orange color is my own hand dyed yarn, and I got the yarn from Yarnorama. It's a 50/50 merino nylon, and um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm annoyed that I couldn't get it finished in time, but you know, it's it's nearly there. It's it's going to be so squishy, so um, I can't wait. I already have um, plans for another couple of patterns um, from Amber, so let's get all my tails in and all my bits of yarn in. Because well, I have to say, this striped section, I'm glad it's done for a minute because um, you tell, the yarn gets carried up the side. Um, so. <laughs> It's so much easier working with one strand of yarn versus two. But it's if you are a new knitter or you're thinking about doing, I mean, I know there's more simple shawls out there to do, um, but this is my first shawl that I've ever knitted, and I actually found it pretty easy to follow. Um, I mean, I had to look up a couple of the the stitches, but. Other than that, it's, it's really easy, so I definitely recommend um, checking it out if you're a new knitter. It is a paid for pattern though, so um, I think it's about $7 maybe. Excuse me, the other pattern that I have from her, and I will have to turn up the brightness on here so you can actually see it. Um, I have so many patterns stored on my iPad, I'm waiting for it to say, mm, no more memory, you don't have any more, no more, stop putting patterns on here. Um, oops. And it is, again, another, oops, pay for pattern. It's the Kalara. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you see that there, I'll put a link to it in the description box. Um, Yeah, you need a main colour and a contrasting colour, which I actually think I'm going to to use um, two of the colours that I got today um, for that. There is another 
pattern of hers that I want to do as well. Oops. Uh, maybe I didn't put it on my iPad. I think I might have just downloaded it on my laptop. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. There is a hat pattern of hers that I got as well. Um, that I want to knit as well. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I've been working on pretty solidly. I have not touched my order, the order blanket, which is, I know, it's terrible. I need to get back into doing that. Um, I think this weekend I'm just going to work solid on my shawl, get it done, get it blocked, finished. Then I'm just going to work on that blanket until I get it finished. I did also start, um, I'm storing it in this body shop bag, um, a blanket because I was looking at my stash and I was like, I have a lot of stuff from the Walton Mill and I really need to be using it. So I decided to start just doing a basic granny square blanket with some of my 12 ply yarn and I'm just going to keep going until I use up um, quite a few of the colours that I have. Um, <clears throat> I don't know exactly what I think that one actually I can't remember what the colour is but I've just got a bunch of them and um, I'm just going to work on that and um, just do up a blanket just to use up some more of my, my yarn because let's face it I have a lot which I think is part of the reason why I went in there with a solid idea of what I wanted to get today, um, had a set budget, um, and really kind of thought about my purchases before I actually made them. I think he's actually um, attacking the young cat. He's been really feral lately. I don't know what his story is. Um, so if you hear ye yelling, that's probably the cat's getting in trouble. Um, it is $22.00 to get in to the Sheep and Wool Show. You can get um, a deal if you're going all three days. Um, obviously we're just going the one, so it's 22. Um, you can buy a parking pass for $5. After today's experience, I would seriously recommend not even bothering to try and park in the actual showgrounds. There is parking outside the showgrounds there's actually a little area where you can pay five dollars and park there that is what i would do versus because i thought oh yeah you know it'll be you know, there'll be a park i don't know why i thought this but um if any of you actually went and parked in the actual showgrounds i'll leave your experience down below um getting in was just a pain as it was i had because there was traffic coming in from the left to go into the um, showgrounds and where I was coming from was the right and um, obviously you're in the turning lanes and people were just pushing in like in their cars pushing in front of me mum's like move up you know because obviously I was, I was driving she's like move up this dude's gonna push in front and uh, in the end I just like I let this other dude in his Audi go through and then I kind of nudged my way in there. I was like, no one else is getting in front of me. I'm going like now, Mrs. Mrs. Whatever you are in your red car, you can just wait. Because I was just getting frustrated. People were like, like they wouldn't, weren't letting anybody in. Like, God forbid if, you know, people get in ahead of you, all the yarn's going to be gone or, you know, all the rams that are for sale, someone's going to buy them all or something. I don't know, but, um... Yeah, it, I, not only that, like I was driving, there's certain sections where you can park and certain sections where you can't. And this Mr. Dude in his Audi, we all went, well, like playing follow the leader and then we realised, oh, okay, well, we can't, there's no parks up here. Well, I didn't want to park there. So I turned around so and like he was, was I had to delete some stuff off. Um, yeah, and like he was telling me to like go, like hurry up and I'm like, just let me turn my car around first. Like, no need to get crazy. And then he, like, hooned past me and went down and got a park down the other end. And I'm like, fine. So I went back up the other end and just, like, there was, like, one car parked here. So I just parked, like, behind it. And there was e 
like way it was easy for both cars to get out I wasn't blocking anyone in which is what I didn't want to do because I know how annoying it can be um, but yeah so that was fine um, but yeah I would recommend parking outside the showgrounds and then yeah making your way in um, because parking in there can be crazy and that and today's a Friday so I can only imagine what it's gonna be like tomorrow um, yeah and this silly person in a Jeep decided like because you go around that way to get out they were parked like here so there was barely enough room for my car to get through and I have Volkswagen Jetta so I mean I don't have a little car but my car is not the it's not the smallest car in the world it's not the biggest car in the world it's you know average size um, but there's no way a four-wheel drive would be able to get through there like there was barely maybe one or two inches either side between the pole dividers and the other car to get through and like there was nowhere else I could get through so I mean I don't know why they decided to park there it's kind of a silly idea and someone probably sideswiped their car because they park so close but yeah just don't don't go parking in there if you if you can avoid it I need to take this off my head because it's making me itch and you can see my hair's growing back a little bit it was actually three months and one week since I shaved my hair it's crazy so yeah my advice would be have a set budget and also have either projects in mind or colorways that you might want to get that you don't have in your stash already or you know specific things that you want want to get because um, I could see how it can be very easy to go a little bit overboard and um, impulse buy um, and it was funny I was actually um, chatting to a lady um, at one of the stores and my mum was looking at me like really do you even know that person we didn't know each other but we were just like talking and trying to pick out colorways and stuff like that so um yeah it was it was kind of funny um she was actually mate um crocheting a virus shawl so we were kind of talking about colors for that um but my first stop was fiberific had to stop by and uh check out Chantel's store and um that's where I spent oops a good amount of money a good amount of money but not the most money put it that way um she had a lot of needles there um, she had sets, um, she also had crochet hooks, she also had individual um, circulars. So I picked up myself another set of the uh, Chaigu red lace, or the lace ones. Um, these are the 32 inch 3.75 because this is what um, I needed to do the other shawl with. So. And there's been other shawls that I've wanted to do and I haven't had a second set so I picked up um, another um, set of these so glad to have, have those I also I was looking at the the needles and I turned around and I was having a look at some yarn and this one caught my eye but then when I looked at the tag and it said one of a kind I had to have you put one of a kind on there, I'm going to buy it. Um, this is called Accident in the Candy Cane Factory. And it is just so pretty. I do not... This is my impulse buy. I don't actually know what I'm going to make with it yet. Um, it is an 80% wool, 20% nylon. In 100 grams, there is 375 meters. But it's, it's very cool. It's has mostly pink and white but then there's splotches of some blue 
and what looks to be purple to me. Um, there's like a little bit of a teal colour and then there's like a darker blue as well. So I'm not sure what I'm going to make with this yet, but um, we'll see. So I picked that up. And then I was kind of just waiting to pay and I noticed these and I've wanted to get one of these for a while. I was almost going to actually order one from America um, when the dollar went up a bit more. But it's the Perfect Notions case and this was $5. Oh, I didn't sell this one. This um, one of a kind colorway was $25. She had a bunch of yarns there. There was some just pure silk. Um, there was like merino and nylon blends. It was just awesome. But, um, but you open it up and then it has all the little compartments in there. Um, and I snatched the last purple one. Well, I mean, I don't know if she had any more underneath. She probably did, but it was the last purple one in the box of ours. I'm having that one. So it just has little compartments to put all your stitch markers and stuff in. So I'm excited that I grabbed that. And they come in a few different colours. But then across from her was this one. This is Silver Star Yarn. Um, it's by a particular brand. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think this is just their kind of um, type of yarn line. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it so I will write it down here and I saw this colour and I was like that is going to be a shawl and it's actually kind of funny because I was saying to mum on the way home I'm like I rarely spend like $30 on one skein of yarn so how much was this skein of yarn? $30 um, it's because it's got the Stelita in it and it also has um, it's 75% merino 15% nylon, 5% cashmere, and 5% silver stellina. So that's that's why, but it is so pretty. I don't know that this camera and this lighting will do it justice. I'll have to see because I can't, like obviously I can see the screen, but I can't tell if it, the sparkles are showing up from this far back. But so pretty. So let's go. So this is going to be, <coughs> I think I'm going to make the Kalara. And this and another skirt that I'm going to show you in a minute. So there is 423 meters in here, so more than enough that I need for um, that particular one. There was also a, it was actually, it's actually funny, there was another blue, um, it was a little bit lighter than the other one that I'm going to show you in a minute, from a, bit, a different stall, but I didn't get that one. There was also a red yarn that had sparkle in it and I was like mm, I don't really use red very often so I, I didn't get it but so they do have they there is a um blog spot address on the tag so I'll pull that up then the last place that I went was hand dyed by hand yarns and I was kind of looking at another store my mom's because I told her kind of what I was thinking about getting she's like they've got that soak stuff that you wanted to get it's over there and um, I was looking at some other yarns this stage and they were really pretty too and I went over there and was having a look and they have like the really little bottles the medium and then there's the large like I got um, <coughs> This bottle was $24.50, the medium one I think was $14.50 and I can't remember what the small one was. Um, I was going to get the Celebration scent but they didn't, I, I don't know if she had more down you know, in the tubs and stuff that she had, I, did, I didn't bother asking, I just got this one because I didn't mind the scent. This is the Yuzu um, scent and this is 375 mils or 12 fluid ounces. So, this is going to last me a very long time here. There's a very small amount of this. And I was like, I might as well just pay the extra $10 and get the big bottle. Because I was thinking about ordering this um, online anyway. So I just figured I'll just get the, get the big bottle of it. Um, and while I was there, I was looking at her yarn. And I thought this, I was kind of looking for some more solid kind of colours. But then I saw this and I thought, 
that is going to go perfectly with um, with the other colour that I just bought. And this is the Tough Stocking. It is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. In 100 grams, you get 423 meters or 463 yards. So there is going to be the same yardage in these. So I thought these would go perfectly together for that other um, shawl pattern that I showed you. So I'm a little bit excited to knit that up. Um, and this one has um, <coughs> some lighter blues and some black in there as well. So I just think that they will go really well together. So yeah, that's what I got from the Sheep and Wool show. Um, I, I didn't go too nutty because I'd already set my budget anyway. Um, I think I was joking with mum like, hmm. So I should start to save up for next year now and she was just looking at me as if to say, oh my gosh, no. <coughs> um, but I think, yeah, definitely have a set um, budget. <clears throat> I find it easier and quicker to pay for things if you use cash over using your card. Um, I mean, I know some people only use their cards, but... I find it a lot easier to actually um, just use your, Thank you. your um, yeah it just makes it so much easier and you can just pay and, and go quicker. Um, I think for next year I will kind of put a bit more money aside, um, I basically spent my pitiful tax return that I got back. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I'm really happy with my purchases. Um, I don't regret purchasing anything. Um, if anything, I would have liked to have maybe gotten a few different sizes of these. Um, I already have a few sizes, but um, I because it was one of the first stores that I went to, I probably could have gone back because I still had money left over. But um, she, Chantel ships out her stuff really really quickly um, and her prices are really good as well so um, if you're looking for chargers and you're in Australia then check out Fiberific. Or if you go into the shipping motion check her out there obviously. Um, so yeah that's what I got. Um, I'm excited to grow next year. Um, obviously I probably as I said will take more funds with me next year and I'll probably maybe go to some of the podcaster events and things um but yeah it was fun to have a look around um my mum even purchased something um which I thought was kind of funny she was like hmm I wonder what they'll have there if there's anything that I'll be interested in but um yeah it was it was a fun day um I said we weren't there for too long um but yeah definitely do not park in the show inside the showgrounds it's a nightmare just park on the out outer edges of the showgrounds and then make your way in so much easier anyway i'm gonna go thank you guys so much for watching um i didn't really take any any photos or videos while i was there i was too busy kind of looking at everything but uh, i will definitely try to do that next year um, I don't know if there's any other podcasters that I watch that will be kind of taking some videos and things while they're there. I'll have to have a look, um, and maybe I can link some of their episodes down below if they, if they do. So, anyway, I'm going to go and, uh, I will see you all in the next video. Hopefully with a finished Anissa wrap that I can share with you. Thanks for watching. Bye.